All right. Okay, good morning, defenders and protectors. Um, it's been a while since uh, we've been able to, to have class. Uh, uh, it's been a while since I've been able to, to teach you guys. So um, this is a little bit different than the last time that we, we've done this. So this morning we're going to um, we're going to read the passage of scripture, um, uh, Acts chapter nine, verse thirty-six. Um, you know, usually when uh, when I teach, I make sure that you all have your Bibles and turn to the scripture with. So if you don't have your Bible, now would be a really good time to to uh, pause the video, go get your Bible and find Acts chapter 9 verse 36 and we're going to read 36 through 43 and talk about that a little bit so now would be a time a good time to do that okay so Acts chapter 9 verse 36 through 43 um, we're going to read about the account of Tabitha a disciple of Jesus and God resurrecting Tabitha from the dead through the Apostle Peter's prayer and submission to him so, but before we, um, we read that and uh, we, we talk about it and, and I'll ask questions and uh, hopefully we'll make this uh, kind of fun. Um, uh, before we do that, we should, we should pray and, and ask God to bless our time uh, studying His Word. So let's go ahead and let's, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, um, we thank you for this morning and <clears throat> I thank you for your goodness and mercy and uh, thank you for your word, the instruction and uh, the wisdom we can receive from it, the reproof that we can receive from, from studying your word. And um, Father, I just <clears throat> pray that uh, we would be attentive to listen to your Holy Spirit and uh, be submissive and humble and uh, and just ready to hear what uh, you would have us to hear and uh, and put to practice in our lives what uh, you would have us to see Lord and I just thank you again for uh, this time and your word in Christ's name I pray amen okay so you should have your Bible and it should be open to Acts 9 and we'll start at verse 36 through 43. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll read those verses here. And uh, then I'll have some true and false questions for you that, that'll, that'll help, uh, help us to look back into these verses and make sure we got everything. So, okay, so <clears throat> Acts 9, we'll start at verse 36. Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she became ill and died, and when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, Please come with us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, rise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then calling all the saints and widows, he presented her alive, and it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And he stayed in Joppa for many days with one Simon, a tanner. Okay, so if you need to, um, go ahead and, and go back through those verses real quick. You can pause the video. Um, Go through the verses, read it through a couple more times, and uh, uh, we'll do that. And I'll have some questions that will help you answer these questions. They're true and false questions. All right. So question number one. Tabitha and Dorcas are two different people. Is that true or false? 
Tabitha and Dorcas are two different people. Hmm. That is false. Let's read verse 36. Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. Okay, so the same person, just uh, Dorcas is a translation of the, the name Tabitha. Okay, <clears throat> so when you hear the name Dorcas later on in the verse, they're the same person in one. All right, question number two. After Peter told Tabitha to arise, Tabitha smiled and thanked Peter. Is that true or false? So after Peter told Tabitha to arise, Tabitha smiled and thanked Peter. That is false. Let's read uh, verse, verse 40. Let's start there. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed, and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha arise, and she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave her his hand and raised her up. So she opened her eyes, and she saw Peter, and then she sat up. Okay. All right, so that is false. Question number three. Many people believed in the Lord after Tabitha was resurrected and Peter stayed in Joppa for many days after. Is that true or false? Many people believed in the Lord after Tabitha was resurrected and Peter stayed in Joppa for many days after. Hmm. That is true. Okay, let's look in verse, let's start in 41. <laughs> and he gave her his hand and raised her up and... Then calling all the saints and widows, he presented her alive, and it became known. So this miracle became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And he, Peter, stayed in Joppa for many days with one Simon a Tanner. Okay, so that's true. All right, I hope you guys are getting these right. Okay, question four. Tabitha was a selfless person and served God by serving others with good deeds and acts of charity. So Tabitha was a selfless person and served God by serving others with good deeds and acts of charity. Is that true or false? That is true. Okay. Let's read in verse 30. We'll start in 36, right at the beginning. We'll find it in there. Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. So as we read through that, I hope you see that, that Tabitha, or Dorcas, she, was, she had a Christ-like character and a servant's heart that um, served other people and uh, her church body and her community. Uh, we'll have a question later about uh, how she served them also. So, all right, that is true. Uh, question five. Peter was in Jerusalem when Tabitha died. Peter was in Jerusalem when Tabitha died. Is that true or false? Hmm, it's a little tougher one. That's false. Hope you've seen that. Yeah, it's false. Um, let's look, verse 38, I'll start at 37 to read into it. In those days she became ill and died, and when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, please come with us without delay. Okay, so... He was not in Jerusalem. He was in Lydda. And it's a good thing he wasn't in Jerusalem because it was twice as far as Lydda is from uh, Joppa. So, all right, that is false. Now, this last one should be an easy one. Tabitha was a tent maker. Is that true or false? Tabitha was a tent maker. Hmm. False. Okay, let's read in verse 39. 
the start there, and we'll see we'll see what abilities that uh, God gave her. So Peter rose and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the, took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics. A tunic is a type of a dress and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. Okay, so Tabitha was more of like a seamstress. She she made clothing and uh, she did sewing and she that's the abilities that God gave her and that's that's what she did to serve uh, um, says here to serve the widows and other people in her community and uh, her church body she made clothes for them so she spent her time that God allowed her to have and her abilities that God gave her to serve the needs of uh, other people so the next couple questions uh, kind of this kind of leads into the next couple questions I have. Uh, these are just questions of um, that maybe we can use just to kind of reflect to see how maybe have us think about how we can use the ability and the time that God's allowed us to have uh, to serve our family. You know, you're all at home and with your family, and uh, you can definitely have a servant's heart there and. Uh, also to serve uh, our church body um, and our community, our friends, our people around us. And uh, so I've got a couple more questions and a few verses of scripture and hopefully give some insight into that. So, all right. <clears throat> Question number one, how does God want us to use our time? Now, there's lots of verses out there that uh, uh, helps helps, gives us instruction and wisdom in how God really wants to use, us, use our time. Uh, I just found a two that, that God uh, um, allowed me to, to meditate on a little bit on, on my own um, my own time and, and, and abilities that God's allowed me to have. So I want to share those with you. So the first one is Ephesians 2.10. Uh, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which prepared us in advance, which God prepare, prepared us in advance for us to do. Uh, so that's Ephesians 2.10. So you don't have to turn there. Uh, but uh, it says here that God has created us. Created us. Uh, we know this. And... Uh, we're created in, in Christ Jesus. So when we're, we, uh, to do good works. So God wants us to use this, this time to, to do good works and serve others. Um, hold on here. My computer went to sleep. There we go. All right. Um, <clears throat> so that's verse one. So verse two, um, how does God want us to use our time? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness for all things in it. All things will be given to you as well. So Matthew 6, 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So one way he wants us to use our time is to, to do good works and serve others. Um, another way, and a very important way, is uh, to seek his kingdom and his righteousness. And, and how do we do that? We, we spend time learning about him. And we spend time learning about his, his, his love for us and, his, uh, and his, his grace in our lives. And, and the only way we can do that is to... Um, spend time in his word um, make sure we go to church and learn about him uh, Sunday school classes frontline um, just make sure you're there and that's that's uh, and you're learning and you're 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 uh, learning about his love because he does love you and uh, he wants to show you that he wants you to understand that so that's two ways that God wants us to use your time there's many other ways that he wants us to use the time that he's allowed us to have <clears throat> uh, but those are two that just uh, stood out uh, 
to me that uh, we're created to do good works and he wants us to learn about him and he wants us to share that with others so all right next question how does God want us to use our our abilities uh, we got one verse there first uh, Peter 410 um, as each has received a gift use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace okay so we all have gifts and abilities that God's allowed us to have and uh, if, if you're if you're watching this and, and you say to yourself you know well, I really don't know what my abilities are um, I would suggest to you that you you pray and you ask God to show you and he'll he'll show you what that is but after he shows you what that is, don't don't squander it on yourself. Uh, use that ability, whatever whatever it may be. Maybe you're uh, you like to cook, and you've had good success at that. Uh, you can share that, or maybe you are like to sew or or, or put something together. You you like to do art. Uh, maybe you're good at sports. Uh, maybe God wants you use to use uh, that ability to. <clears throat> use that to to play with others and have a relationship with others with it'll give you opportunity to to share of his his good grace in your lives so there's there's many different ways there's uh, uh and, and and what those abilities are we're all a little bit different uh, but if you don't know what that is ask god to to help you see how he's given you abilities and how he's gifted you but after you see that, use it. Don't don't just squander it. It's, it says that we've received it as a gift, and we're to use it to serve one another. And with the verse before, in good works. So, all right. <clears throat> Another one here. Let's uh, talk a little bit about treasures. How does God want you to use your treasures for His glory? Hmm. Well. Some of us may be saying, "Well, I don't have a ton of money, so I can't, I can't give that away or use that to serve." But there's, there's one treasure that's more important than, than money, and it's the most, most uh, important treasure, and the, it's the, 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 most. That's the biggest treasure that there is in existence. Um, I'll read First Peter two, nine through ten. <clears throat> But if you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received my mercy, but now you have received mercy. Okay, so it says, but... You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into the, his marvelous light. Okay. So, I think uh, the, the greatest treasure we have and can have is the saving, saving grace that we have in our our Savior Jesus um, and if you have that um, it says here is that God wants us to proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness so God wants us also to share the treasures or the treasure if you have Jesus in your heart he wants us to share that um, with others and, and proclaim his excellencies. So this is the, the greatest treasure that we can have, but we don't want to squander that because it's also given by God. And uh, he wants us to share that treasure with others. So <clears throat> I hope you guys uh, asked yourself these questions and I hope it's uh, going to help you this week to... to uh, have a mindset of a servant's heart like Tab Tabitha, and I uh, hope it helps you to serve your family at home and uh, your church family, especially when we get back going to church. So 
Um, <clears throat> defenders and protectors, I hope to see you very soon. Um, but if not, you can be a servant wherever you're at, serving the Lord. Um, let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father, we do thank you for um, this scripture and thank you for, for Tabitha's testimony. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to uh, look into your word uh, this morning. Um, and I pray that uh, it was profitable in each of our lives, Lord. And I pray as we go go throughout this time, especially this uh, trying time of uh, being at home and stuck inside, that uh, I just pray, Lord, you please, and ask that you would show us uh, ways that we can serve one another. Um, and uh, I know as uh, we're not together um, right now, that, that we can be together and are together, Lord, spiritually. And we can uh, always remember to pray for one another and uh, we can still love one another. And I just uh, thank you for this day again. In Christ's name, amen.